Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Long time no see, and I've got a little bit of an explanation for you as to why that is. But in this video, we're going to be answering some questions you guys have asked. Um, we're gonna go into some details on various things that I haven't spoken about before. And really, uh, I put out on Instagram the other day and on my YouTube community page, um, just ask me anything. I guess a little bit of a end of year special, if you like. But first, I just wanna very quickly apologize. Um, and I know I don't really need to apologise for this, but I feel like I owe it to you just in the sense that I've not been uploading over the past sort of few weeks, really. There's not been much content on, on YouTube, uh, neither on Instagram. So I apologise for that because I have, well, most of this year kept religiously up with my schedule of an upload on Wednesday and an upload on Sunday. And over the past month or so, you may have noticed that's been slipping. And, uh, well, I won't hide behind anything, but... There's a reason for that and well, firstly, uh, I'll be honest at this time of year, as many of us do, I struggle with depression. Um, it's something I struggle with all year round, but particularly at this time of year when it's dark and it's not very sunny, um, it can get quite bad and I, I do I do struggle with that. Uh, also, at the same time, over the past month or so, some pretty severe personal things have been going on which have just sort of added to that whole spiral of feeling down and obviously when you feel down you don't feel very motivated to, to do things and certainly not to um, you know make videos sometimes even getting out of bed is a struggle and I'm not looking for sympathy at all I'm just being honest and I think it's a very important thing to talk about um, at any opportunity is is mental health because it's something that many 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 more of us uh, struggle with than we would care to admit and if there's anyone out there watching that can sort of relate to me, then I wish you all the very best and just want to let you know that it will be fine. So today we're going to sort of do another video. Uh, I've managed to sort of bring myself out to do this. And obviously this is going to be a very simple, lots of jump cuts Q&A. But you may find it interesting because, like I say, we're going to go into some topics that I haven't really discussed before having seen lots of the questions, a lot of them actually being around what I do for work and also how much YouTube pays me. So I think we will talk about that a little bit in this video, so stay tuned. Now I feel rude asking because I've been so crappy with uploads over the past few weeks, but if you are one of my regular 75% or so of viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate if you took the time now to hit that biggest video. And also I just wanna say on the mental health thing, I'm not looking for sympathy of course, but as I mentioned, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people struggle with this. And so just remember to be kind, even um, especially, you know, social media, what you see is not the truth. Um, it's, it's a lot of it is an act. And there's a lot of videos I film, for example, where I'm really not feeling good and things have gone on and you would probably never know watching. But I just want to say, if there's creators on YouTube that you watch a lot, and maybe you don't comment or every now and then you'll you'll leave a comment. I just encourage you over the next week or so as we go through Christmas and the new year to just go onto their channel on any video and just leave a really nice comment because I know, for example, when I see nice comments like that, um, it can just make the difference between me having a good day and a bad day when I'm quite low. So I really encourage you to, to go ahead and, and just, just do that out of the kindness of your heart just a few words on the screen, but if they see it, I know uh, for a fact, and I'm speaking to many of these people, um, it will go a long way. So anyway, do subscribe if you're not already, and let's get into the video. Starting with Instagram then, we've got a question from MWDP saying, is it better to have four older cars or one newer car? Now, without going into too much detail, essentially that is just up to you, it's personal preference. For me, I would probably not have four cars if I didn't do YouTube for a job um, because no one really needs four cars. And obviously with the sort of cars that I own now, as you guys very well know, they're not cheap to run and, you know, they're not awful in terms of money spent, but the amount of time that goes into sort of keeping them all on the road and there's always some sort of repairs to do. In fact, go back and watch my last video on the channel where I go into a bit more in-depth detail on this. But for me, I'd always have variety over one nice new car. In an ideal world, I'd always have a nice new car as well as some of the older stuff. But at the moment, excuse me, I'm definitely happier having variety as opposed to just one thing. It's it's much better for me, but also for, for YouTube. Is the plan to still get an M6? So for those of you that don't know or are new, um, for me, the sort of car I've always spoken about on this YouTube channel is the E63 generation. 
BMW M6. Lots of you will know the E60 M5 with the V10. Well, the M6 is the exact same car, exact same engine. It's just the coupe variant, which for me, I've always preferred over the M5. I know the M5 is the more popular one, and the M5 is a gorgeous looking car, whereas the M6 is a little bit vulgar. Anyway, I've I've lusted after one of them for many years, and I've hinted at the uh, on, on videos and on the channel that I would like to buy one, and that that might become an imminent possibility. And so next year, uh, 2022, I hope will be the year that I do buy a V10 M6. So in short, to answer your question, uh, Rob 71 UK2, the plan to still get an M6 is still the plan. Jason Auto says, would you ever consider a W221 Mercedes S-Class or would you buy another 7 Series? Um, I, I, having owned the 7 Series, I always want to have a Luxo barge in the garage. Now, I'd be very keen on a S-Class, definitely. I definitely want to own an S-Class at some point. I think if I was to replace the 7 Series, and again, I want to do this, it just comes on funding and, and all the rest of it, but there's two main options I think that would be coming next. Either a newer, or should we say three? Either a newer S-Class, uh, so what would it be? I don't know what the generation is called, but I think it might even be 2T1, but anywhere from 2005 to 2012, that sort of gen. So an S63 or something like that of one of those. Uh, a Bentley Continental Flying Spur, They're, you can get them for £15,000 now. Or, and probably most likely, because they're even cheaper, a first generation Maserati Quattroporte. I really would like one of those. One of the best sounding V8 cars, probably short of the U60 M5, the best sounding saloon car ever made. So, but to answer your question, would I uh, consider an, an, an S Class or another 7 Series? Well, I'd always go with something else first. Let's say that. Luke Prattley 2121, going a little bit more personal. Your past, what did you do straight out of school and how did you get to where you are now? Um, oh gosh, it's quite a boring one, but essentially I went to school, I went to college like most people, but actually throughout my childhood and throughout school and college, all I ever wanted to do when I came out was be an airline pilot. I never wanted to do YouTube or, or even video making for that matter. I wanted to be an airline pilot. But for those of you that do know, airline pilot training is very expensive. I mean, at the time it was around 120, 130,000 pounds, including the type rating course you do with the airline when you're offered a job. So a lot of money, which I would have had to borrow. And in fact, when I was 18, I did have a place at Oxford Aviation Academy. Um, I went to obtain my medical and I had the funding secured um, as a loan. However, I sort of, I'll be honest, I, I bottled it. I was 18 years old and there's horror stories you hear about people not getting through their training um, or things happening to the industry, which I'll get on to in a minute. Um, but I essentially bottled it and just thought, you know what, I'm 18. I don't need to commit to this right now. I want to try other things first. And that's what I did. But in hindsight, it was probably a good call because had I gone through airline training, I'm 24 now. I probably would have been in my first first officer job, co-pilot job at 2021. And obviously with the pandemic happening well, starting almost two years ago when I was 22, 23, I most likely would have been out of a job about one or two years into my very early flying career. So that would have been extremely stressful having a big loan to pay with no flying job. So that's actually uh, my past. How did I get to where I am now? Well, um, loads of you might know this, but I started filming with drones. I bought a drone, did loads of drone videos. And then very shortly after that, seen through glass, uh, Sam, who's another automotive YouTuber, put out a video asking for someone to apply to work for him. And that ended up being me. So for about six to nine months, I can never quite remember, I worked as sort of Sam's right-hand man on the Sing Through Glass channel, just in terms of filming. And from that, really, that blossomed into me doing more video production work. I worked at a corporate video firm for a couple of years. And um, ended up starting my own YouTube channel. Here we are. What car would you like to have on the channel if money was no object? Um, I think actually what it would be is doing something along the lines of buying the UK's cheapest Ferrari. There's a few Ferraris that I genuinely love, not just because they're the cheapest, but I've always loved, namely the 612 Scaglietti, which they did in the uh, London to Verbier race in top gear. That very car was for sale quite recently, actually. But you can pick up a 612 anywhere between 40 and 50 grand quite reasonably. And so if money was no object, I'd probably be buying one of them or an old manual 456 Ferrari. Probably the cheapest gated manual V12 Ferrari 
you'll ever be able to buy because you can pick them up for again around or just under £40,000 as a manual which if I had that money I would jump on immediately because well I love those cars imagine straight piping one of them for a laugh um, but also I think not many people know about these Ferraris and how affordable they are to, to buy at least now so I think making a, a series around that would be extremely fun and, and rewarding so money no object that's probably what I'd do Oliver Christie 06 says, what's a car everyone hates that you like? Hmm, I mean, to be honest, Ferrari 612, Scalietti and 456, no one seems to like them, but I do. There's many, many others. I have strange taste. I mean, even the E63 M6 people actually hate. Um, if I show people, oh, I want to buy one of these, they go, why would you want that? Because they are quite vulgar. Can't think off the top of my head now, but there's there's lots of cars out there that I like that people hate. In fact, most of the cars... I like, you'll probably hate. Brums Grub uh, says, is doing YouTube at the moment worth all the hard work? Balancing everything must be really tough. In short, the answer to that is yes. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to be doing what I do. And it's incredible. It's an incredible job because I work for myself. No one can tell me to get out of bed, uh, which sometimes might be helpful for me when I have my sort of low, low points. But I don't have to be anywhere at any time for anyone if I don't want to be. And the sort of possibilities for earning potential doing YouTube are unlimited. And we'll get into that a little bit at the moment in terms of whether it's worth it. It is hard work um, because I only make money if I go out there and, and make stuff. So you've always got that in the back of your mind. And it is sort of 24-7 in the sense that there's always people trying to get hold of you. There's always opportunities coming through the door, emails, messages, um, and you're always tempted to go onto your YouTube app and, and look at how the channel's doing. So it sort of never stops and it's always in the background. It can be very hard to switch off and, and, and wind down, which is something I'm going to try and do over these next week or so over the Christmas period. But in short, to your answer, and we'll get onto the finances a little bit because I've seen a lot of questions around that. Um, it's, it's it's definitely worth it. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else right now. I certainly wouldn't want to be working another desk job. And for those of you that, that do do it, um, I appreciate some of you enjoy it and that works for you. And it is a struggle because I've done it uh, for many years until the past year, actually. I've only been full-time on YouTube for about a year now. And I work stacking shelves for a couple of years. I've done lots of jobs and I feel very, very fortunate to be doing this one now. So I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. Although it is tough, it is worth it. It's a great question from 1066JRH. If your car budget was four or five times what it is now, would you end up with more expensive cars or more cars? I think probably I'd err on the side of more cars. Um, I like the cheap stuff because all of the cheap stuff is, is between sort of 2000, 2010 when I was growing up watching Top Gear. So that's what I end up buying. <clears throat> but excuse me, but I probably would have a few more expensive ones as well. So probably a mixture of both. I reckon if I had four or five times the budget, yeah, I'd end up with some pretty nice stuff actually, but probably just as many cars, if not more than what I've got now. 1M Garland says, what was my first car? Interested to know. My first car is or was a 2001 Vauxhall Corsa Comfort Edition in a very nice blue. It was almost similar if you saw the Audi SQ8 video I did in Paris a few months back. It was almost a galaxy blue like that. It was pretty gorgeous actually. And I put racing stickers on it and, and all sorts of stuff. And actually there was a hole in the exhaust so it sounded quite noisy. That was my first car. I ended up writing it off twice. I crashed it into a tree. Um, luckily it was okay, but paid sort of to repair that. And then I drove it through sort of a natural Ford and didn't come out the other end. But that car cost £1,200. Um, my dad paid half and I paid the other half. And that was my, my first car. Sadly, no longer exists. Okay, so lots of questions here. Horse Fighter 69 what do you do for a living? Uh, there's quite a few questions asking that. I am a full-time YouTuber now, somehow. Um, I don't quite know how, but it has just happened. I was working as a senior production assistant at a corporate video firm until around October, November of 2020, um, when I was made redundant. I'd been on furlough since more or less April when the whole pandemic thing happened and was made redundant right towards the end of the year. And so at that point, I think the channel was on around 12,000 subscribers. So it certainly wasn't making me, it was it was probably almost making me 
as much as the day job, but only on good months, if that makes sense. So at that point I said, right, you know what, let's give this a go full time. And I haven't stopped since. It's sort of been growing quite nicely and, and we're, we're doing okay now. So um, this is this is my, my full time job now. How many hours a week do you work on preparing, filming and editing your videos from Debel192? That varies massively and, and I'm not the most organised of, of people so I don't really have a schedule. I tend to have, uh, when when there's big projects on, I, I do nothing else. It's sort of, I work on, on those things every day. For example, that Paris edit was at least at least 40 hours of, of editing. So that, you know, was a full week of work just to edit that video. And then obviously filming it was another few days. Um, and it, it varies because, you know, this, this video that I'm filming right now, well, to film it will take me probably, including the door-to-door -door driving up here and probably a couple of hours to, to film this and then to edit this because it is going to be a very lazy edit with just loads of jump cuts and no B-roll. This will probably take me an hour to edit, then about an hour to export. And then it takes around an hour to upload and add the title and all you know all that stuff. So even very simple like this can can a uh, very simple video like this can take five or six hours to to make. Um, but it it varies very highly. Uh, there's some weeks certainly over the past few where I could have worked a lot harder, and there's some weeks where I work way too much. So it it varies. It's hard to put a specific number on it, but from video to video it can change quite drastically. What are the three priorities to focus in to succeed as a YouTuber from Simon P. Godding? Well, um, I've never really offered any advice and I don't think necessarily I'm the best person to offer advice because, you know, my channel's not huge. But there's a few things I've noticed over the years or so of doing this now that 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 might help you. So number one, I think most importantly, is... You've got to come across. You've got to come across well, well on camera. If your personality isn't very personable, relatable, um, it depends what you're trying to achieve. But you've got to come across well. You've got to be um, interesting to listen to. And I might sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but I'm not trying to do that at all. I think it is true. I'm thinking from a viewer's perspective. If you're not interesting to listen to, um, it's not fun to watch and actually a pet hate of mine when watching other videos and I know I do this as well but there's some people who really really repeat themselves and repeat themselves and repeat themselves almost just to make the video longer but try and think about what you're saying and try and you know in the edit make sure you're just leaving in valuable stuff that people are going to find interesting so that's I guess the first thing I would say number two is you know the content you're doing certainly in the automotive sector um, and Sam seen through glass will, will tell you this a lot. It's very, very saturated and you've really got to try and find a niche. Um, don't try and replicate anyone else's content. Now I know there's elements of what I do with sort of the challenges where it's a bit like top gear and uh, perhaps even car throttle at times. So that's not, I wouldn't say that's replicating content. That's taking inspiration from other people's ideas and making them into your own, but just try and bring in some degree of originality, whether it's in your personality, in the sorts of cars that you buy, which I'd say is probably a little bit of what I've done. I've bought cars that haven't really been seen on, on YouTube before. Um, so that's probably helped me along. But yeah, just finding your own sort of, your niche um, is is going to be tremendously helpful. I'd say number three as well, and this is one that I, I think is really important, is don't take it too seriously. Especially when you're starting out, YouTube is really not a business. It's something you potentially might want to grow into a business, but you've really got to focus on growing that audience first before you start thinking of it and approaching it fully as a business. Obviously, it's helpful to do that and have a plan, but really, you've got to be relatable, as I mentioned earlier, and, and make really good, interesting content to just get that audience in the first place. And yeah, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't worry uh, initially about doing crazy edits and crazy camera shots, because actually... I find that quite hard to watch if they're not done really well. So just first and foremost, don't take it too seriously. Film some interesting content. Be really laid back with how you film it and laid back with how you edit it. Don't get too intense with it all until you've really found your niche and then you can explore going into more details on those sorts of things. Um, that's sort of what came to mind. That might not be helpful advice, but lots of people say, you know, just, you know, stick to 
one video a week, two videos a week, and that is very helpful, but I think you've got to make sure you're not churning shit. You've got to put some stuff out there, be authentic, do what you want to do, be chilled out about it, and then you'll slowly start growing an audience, and then you can listen to them a little bit more as to what they want to see, and just come to some sort of pact where you are making stuff you enjoy, but your audience are always asking for it as well, if that makes sense. That's what I feel like I've got with you guys, which is which is great. It'd be lovely to have a channel 100 times this size, but I'd much rather have a smaller channel where I feel like everything I make is going to be enjoyed by you guys. And that's what I try to do. And I think I have I've got to that stage through making what I want to do and, and listening to you and just really working with the community on it over the past sort of year or so. So that would be my advice, if that is advice or tool. Uh, and I hope it doesn't sound arrogant in any way because I'm not trying to be like that. What was my favourite video from the last year? Well, I think this one's quite... Is it easy, though? Because I've, I've had lots of fun making videos over the last year, but the one that really comes to mind initially, and I think it might be the same for lots of you guys, is where we drove my 7 Series from Scotland, or Ben Nevis, to the Shard in London on one tank of fuel. That, for me, was a real highlight because it was the first time I travelled somewhere for YouTube, um, specifically. I traveled up to Scotland, had my brother with me who I paid and went and set out to do a YouTube project away from home. And the fact that it then performed really, really well, I think it's got over 200,000 views or so now, um, was amazing, but the views are less important. The way it received by, by you guys was mind blowing and amazing. And me and my brother were very, very happy indeed but also the genuine euphoria when we did manage to complete the challenge and we arrived in London was intense and incredible. And obviously I was with my brother, so it was an, inc an incredible sort of experience to share with him, um, which I won't forget. And I think the whole thing was just a joy from being in Scotland in that incre incredible place and filming some of the shots. So obviously we did all of that before we actually did the challenge. Uh, to the drive down, you know, where the car actually made it because it was a real challenge. It felt like we'd really worked hard for it and it worked. And then you guys enjoyed it as well. So I think the standout for, for 2021 has to be that video. I'll leave a link to it up in the top right hand side. Uh, and you can you can go have a look if you haven't seen it. But uh, I really recommend you do because it was definitely the highlight for me. And then the one that you've probably all been waiting for is how much have I made on YouTube in the past year? So I'm not going to BS you. I'll use some figures here uh, and I'll show you as well. But the first thing I will say is the word made is bad because actually when you look at the profit or the, the, the expenditure versus the income, my profit for not last year, but the year before was something like 800 quid. Um, I basically am not making money doing this at the moment because all the money I do make goes into the content creation, goes into buying cars. Um, and that's the reason why I need to sell the 7 Series, for example, because I don't actually have any capital at the moment to sort of do the next thing. So that served its cause. We move that on and we get something else. So what I make um, is, is very, very minimal. Uh, what I earn can, can vary significantly, which I'll go into a little bit now. So obviously there's many ways in which a YouTuber can generate income through ad revenue is the main one that people talk about or AdSense, which is Google uh, money paid to me directly from YouTube from ads that are played on the videos. Now I don't really control what those ads are or how many of them there are. I just let YouTube deal with it and it will surface various types of ads and advertising various types of things based on you, the, the viewer. So this varies dramatically so if, I'm not going to tell you sort of the breakdown of the whole year but I will give you an example so my highest paying month um, in 2021 so far was 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 last month actually November where I earned three thousand and seventy five pounds and thirty two pence from YouTube AdSense revenue so that is literally just from the ads that you see on YouTube so that three grand um, is is pretty good and I, I'm not sure exactly but I think that was based on around five or six hundred thousand views on that month so if you do the maths that equates to roughly about six pounds per thousand views for that month now this uh, which is called the RPM um, varies hugely so for example my lowest paying month was back in let me see if I can find it I think it was March 
yeah, where I earned £672.48, uh, which had a much lower RPM, but also I had much, much less views that month. So what you earn from YouTube, it changes massively and you can control it in terms of how many views you get, but really YouTube does largely decide how many views you get because it will choose whether it's going to surface the video to you guys or not in a lot of cases. What I have got better at doing is making content that I know you guys enjoy and therefore keeping those views sort of a more consistent rate. So um, that sort of gives you an idea that, you know, I earned just over three grand in November from AdSense, uh, but back in March it was just under 700 quid. So how much I make from that varies hugely, but you can probably guess that over the year it's somewhere in between the two. Um, and if you average that over 12 months, maybe we're looking around 20 grand. I don't know the figures exactly, but it's not, you know, not a heck of a lot of money, but good money uh, nonetheless for a channel of my size. Now, the main way in which I create revenue, or probably not the main way, but it's going to become that way, I think, over the next year, is working with brands because I have got so many big ideas for 2022 with some pretty massive trips, which are probably going to cost, we're talking five figures. And so brand deals are great way of paying for those trips um so i think and i can't disclose sort of exact amounts because i'm contractually obligated not to disclose that but what i can tell you is that over the course of this year 2021 i've probably generated around 10 to 15 thousand pounds from sponsored placements on my videos um, whether that be affiliate deals like with Carly that I've done in the past where I get a small commission based on every sale of an OBD reader or whether it be a flat fee where I you know do a piece to camera and a sponsored segment at the start of a video for example for a certain amount of money now although I can't say exactly what that is I think over the year it's probably between 10 and 15 thousand pounds I've generated from doing that and then there's a few other forms of revenue from affiliate based stuff like the Carly thing that I haven't included in that maybe a few grand over the year um, and I can't think of anything else right now but that is essentially it so gives you an idea the numbers aren't astronomical I'm no TG I'm not earning six figures or anything like that uh, but you know this year has been exciting where I've had months where I've earned say you know three grand which is quite a lot of money to me at least um, and I think it probably is to most people because well, it's a, it's a lot of money to be getting from just putting videos on YouTube. And of course, I don't have to tell you the amount of work that goes into it and the amount of stress that comes with it and all the rest of it. But bottom line, that's really exciting. It makes me very happy because I don't see that as money in my bank account because it really isn't. I see that as potential for doing bigger and better things um, next year and as the years go on with the channel. So does that answer your question? How much have I made over the last year? Well, it's not an exact figure, but it gives you a good idea, I think. And um, yeah, I think that's where we'll leave it for today. So as ever, guys, please do comment below if you have any questions because, um, well, this is a Q&A video, so you might as well ask more down below. If I haven't asked, answered your question or you want some more details and stuff I've talked about, I'm very, very happy to speak more about it. So whether that's another video or just replies on, on this one, um, please do leave a comment if you've got any questions at all. Other than that, thanks so much for, for watching this one if you have watched till the end. Um, I want to say thank you so much for your support this year. Now, I don't know if there will be another video before the end of the year, but in case there isn't, I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate it, or at least if you're having some time off, I wish you a great time and have a Happy New Year. Hopefully we're not in another lockdown by then, but it does look like we might be. So look, thank you so much guys. Um, I really appreciate all the support. And if you are, don't worry about me with all mental health stuff I mentioned at the start. I just thought, you know, if, if ever I can give that some airtime and someone might benefit from it, great. And that's why I've spoken about it. It's something I'm able to deal with. I have treatment for, I have lots of support and I'm okay. So don't worry about me, but thank you anyway in advance for any support and messages i appreciate it i really appreciate you you genuinely allow me to do my my i guess it's a dream job isn't it it really is um so i'm going to go home now it's getting very dark and put the fire on i don't actually have a fire it's an electric one but same sort of thing 
uh, and enjoy the rest of my afternoon or try to at least so thanks for watching guys thanks for sending in all your questions i only got through maybe 20 or so and there was at least 10 times that so apologies if i didn't get to yours but i just wanted to sort of answer some big ones that i hadn't really before especially that money one so hope you found it interesting i will see you all then uh hopefully very very soon take care everyone lots of love speak soon bye bye